Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at creating realistic physics-based recoil for weapons in Unity. So in Unity, uh, currently I'm using the OpenXR framework. Uh, so on the screen here, I have uh, a couple of custom scripts, but the basic setup there, which isn't necessarily covered in this tutorial, is using XR Origin. And then for the controllers, we're using uh, XR controllers and uh, direct interactors. So the idea with uh, VR and, and weapon recoil in general is that when the player is moving his controllers, the items or, or whatever the controller is tied to is, is syncing with that move. So using an animation here could could technically work. You could you could animate, um, you know, the weapon. You could animate the hand, but it would it would be very difficult to actually get that to function correctly. As when the player moves the controller, it's essentially overriding any kind of coordinate um, that would be manipulated through the animation. So to do physics based recoil. The idea is that when a controller is picking up a item, or in this case, it's a weapon, when that weapon fires, we would want to be able to realistically, you know, move the weapon, move the hand, but be able to deviate away from what the direct interactor or that open XR controller is syncing for us, right? So as the interactor is syncing with the, the physical controller in your hand, we would be able to move these models kind of independently. And, and the trick here is obviously after a recoil is applied, you want to be able to move that back to its original position. So uh, here's a scene that I have right now that basically just has a hand model holding a weapon. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the setup before, and we can move the controller around in in scene view right here. Is uh, this is just the actual controller? Um, so in a real game, so if I built this and played it through the headset, the idea would be these models would be linked to the controller. So <clears throat> in order to decouple these away from each other, the first step is as part of your direct interactor, you can set what's called an attach transform. So if you don't set an attach transform out of the box, Unity will create one for you. Now, when you create one yourself, it's just a simple empty game object. Uh, I have a couple additional scripts here and then we'll go over those. Um, but the idea is that this is the parent for anything that the interactor is currently selecting. So this child game object lives under the controller. So when I move the controller, it moves the child game object, right? It's a, it's a simple parent-child hierarchy. So we can't just move the, uh, you know, the attach point. Um, away from the controller as the controller is its parent it's it's moving the child so if i look at how everything is set up here in this hierarchy um under my attach point here i have another child object and uh, a child object of that one that actually has my uh, hand model here weapon so in order to actually get this what i fire to move uh, real, somewhat realistically. Uh, so basically, here's here's a little example. So as I pull, as I pull the uh, attach point backwards, it springs back into position. Um, so the idea is that the controller can still move, the child object will still follow it, which is in this case the attach point. But then the attach point is paired to the controller using what's called a configurable joint. And we'll, we'll go over some of these settings here. So the idea is on your attach point, you would create a configurable joint, which adds a rigid body. Um, the rigid body is just basically, you know, created for you. There's no, no custom setup here. Uh, my sphere collider here is 
not uh, related to the configurable joint. So the configurable joint and the rigid body, uh, in this case, go together. These two are extraneous components. Um, on the left-hand controller, you would need a rigid body as well. So in this case, I created a rigid body and I have made it kinematic. I've also just turned off gravity here, so we don't need it in this case. Um, so now, at this point, in my configurable joint that's on my attach point, I can go in and I can choose a connected body. And you'll see that it's connected to my left controller uh, right above it. It's connected to its parent. So right now, the configurable joint would actually be able to connect two rigid bodies together in constraining them using physics. So I have a couple values that are already set here. Um, a lot of this can be found in the documentation, and there's some great videos online that you can find that goes into the different types of physics joints in Unity, uh, so it's not a comprehensive guide on how to use the con So one thing to note here with the configurable joint is the way that this joint controls physics um, and, and constrains those rigid bodies are through these motion fields right here. So you have your uh, linear um, axes and then your angular ones. So in this case, I set them to locked as a demonstration. So if I try to move this, right now it's, it's currently locking this access. It, it won't let me actually move it. So if I come in here and I set it to limited, which limited is, is actually what's enforcing these um, values that are set in the drives and in the Angular drive. Now, if I move this, let me turn them off. Uh, here. So if I move it, it'll start working correctly. So this will actually uh, enable the physics constraint on the weapon. Another thing to note here too, is you could set it to free. So if you just wanted to uh, disable the, um, you know, let's say the rotational one, um, I think because I'm in play mode right now, it acts a little weird, but essentially you would be able to return the, uh, the weapon and the game objects back to an unrestricted state. So maybe there's uh, you know something that happens that uh, temporarily disables or enables the joint. You know you can do that by by changing the values here from free to limited to locked. Um, you know without having to uh, you know turn off maybe a rigid body or you know set it to kinematic. So the linear limit if I just set this to zero. Move it you can see that the gun doesn't really want to move. It's, it's tying itself to its parent. So I'm going to just set the limit as one. Uh, so you want to have a linear limit set, and then you want to be able to, to do two different types of constraints on the weapon. One is you probably want to constrain it along, uh, in this case, it looks like it's the z-axis. You want to constrain it on the z-axis, um, you don't necessarily need to constrain it on the, uh, or sorry, on the x-axis. You don't need to constrain it on the z or the y-axis, um, although you, you could. Um, but the idea here is that we're just more or less interested in, in kind of that pushback from the web. Uh, so in order to do that, you can come down here and you'll see these uh, x-drive, y-drive, and z-drive. So these three uh, sections actually are what control that spring inside the physics joint. So a configurable joint is kind of all of the Unity physics joints rolled into one. And the idea with uh, this drive is it configures the spring that lives in each of these different axes. So as an example, uh, this is my X drive here. So we're on the X axis. Um, if I turn off dampening and I just simulate recoil, you'll see the gun kind of bounces back and forth. So as the spring is trying to enforce that constraint between the parent, which is kinematic, so it's not moving, um, and the child, in this case, is trying to snap back, there's no dampening. So if I apply some dampening to it, I do the same task again, you'll see it snaps back pretty nicely and it doesn't doesn't necessarily go forward. So 
Uh, besides position dampening, there's a couple of other settings here. You have this spring position. So if I set this to zero and I move this around, you'll see that nothing really happens. So this configures the spring inside of the weapon. Uh, I believe this is kind of like the length of the spring, although there's probably a, a clearer definition of that in the documentation. Uh, so if I set this real low, let's say to a value of two, you can see that that spring just very slowly kind of comes back. So um, this is kind of the amount of force within that spring, right? So as I set this number higher, um, I get more, you know, let's set it to uh, a thousand and it'll probably snap back very quickly. Uh, so, you know, this, this value is configurable. You can kind of use what, what feels right to you. Um, beyond that, you have one for the Y and the Z axis. Uh, mine are set here. Again, you don't necessarily need to do it, although you could. Um, so let's talk about, you know, going a little bit beyond this, right? So as an example, um, if I wanted to, let's say I rotate this real quickly. And then the idea here would be, let's say uh, when the weapon fires, I want to be able to, you know, put some uh, put some angular kind of uh, velocity on, on the weapon, right? So it's not just moving left to right on the screen here, but it's also rotating. So if I go down into the attach point here and if I try to rotate it, um, you can see that the gun won't rotate in this direction. Now, that's what these angular X drive, angular Y and Z drive really control on this particular joint. So you'll notice that between this uh, kind of linear drive and these angular drives, the three options available for the axes are identical. You know, so in this particular case, this is the X drive here. So essentially, you'll be able to apply some rotation to the weapon and it'll spring backwards um, you'll be able to provide uh, some so the idea is that the weapon itself will uh, you know basically allow you to apply velocity to the rigid body and this will create that um, effect of you know the weapon moving and you know the the person correcting it at the end of the day the model, I think the hand and the weapon, would want to sync back up with the controller. And ideally, this would happen so quickly, you wouldn't really break immersion in virtual reality because you're essentially correcting it through this joint, right? The, the um, position of the models and the physical controller are in sync. All right, so that, that basically covers the uh, settings here that are on uh, this configurable joint. So again, you're, you're going to create on your direct interactor, you're going to create an attached transform, which is just a child game object. You'll link the two. And then on the attached transform, you'll add your configurable joint, which will add a rigid body. You connect your joint to a new rigid body that you'll create on the controller here. You'll make it kinematic, um, being that this will be moved and manipulated directly through the XR controller. And then after this joint is configured as you would expect it, you would want to interact with it in code. So when a weapon fires, what happens that makes these move from a code perspective? So as an example here, this is some code that um, is currently in a game that I'm developing. And this is actually what applies the uh, forward and back uh, recoil, right? So this is basically saying that my weapon, which is where this script is attached to, I'm gonna apply some force and it's an impulse type force. Uh, so in this case, my, my mass is configured. So you could you know have it respect the mass if you wanted to. And this is all depending on what type of effect you're going for. But I'm applying my force in the negative forward direction or backwards. Um, once this is applied, this will actually move the weapon Right, so as I shoot, it'll go backwards and it will recoil back to its position. Now, the interesting part is if I want to apply some rotational force, the rotation has to happen from a local rotation, right? So you're applying it specifically to the 
local rotation of the attach. So when you're shooting the weapon, you'll effectively apply, in this case, I'm using the right angle since I really want the weapon to kind of rotate. So if you think about holding your hand out straight in front of you, and your palms facing, uh, let's say to your right or your left, depending on which hand you have held out, um, you really want to rotate on the right direction, right, with either hand. So essentially you're providing that kickback mechanism. So in this case here, uh, I just have some arbitrary value times some force value, uh, which, you know, I'm using the same force value up here. But the idea is you apply it to the rotation, the local rotation, and the configurable joint will come back and correct this, right? It'll use the springs and that tension and the dampening and all the values that you've configured to reset that game object back to the controller. So you could definitely take this further. You could take this uh, and, and do something with melee weapons. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, different potential here. Um, this particular setup, I think, works really well for weapons, and you can configure these values however you need them. You can make the force configurable, and you could do different things with it. So as an example, uh, you know, maybe there's something you can attach to the weapon that modifies these values and provides less recoil. Uh, one thing I will note here, though, is on the weapon itself, when the weapon fires, you'll essentially want to be able to uh, understand where the uh, forward direction is, and in particular, where is that weapon when I apply recoil. So if you think about an automatic weapon, it might be firing, firing, firing very fast, and it could fire while it's in the middle of a recoil, right? Which ideally is kind of giving you that, you know, bullet spread that you would expect to see without writing some kind of code to calculate, you know, randomness or apply different angles and such to the actual weapon. Uh, so one way you could do that is you could just put a child game object, maybe something, uh, you know, in this case, this is just called barrel. Uh, but just as an example, so when the weapon fires, so when it rotates, um, you know, this will actually rotate with it, right? So that transform will go up with it. And then essentially you'll be firing uh, wherever that the end of the weapon is in real time. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is using OpenXR. Uh, it's, it's using Unity 2021. And the goal of this video was just to get you a little familiar with the configurable joint. Definitely, I would say the documentation, there are videos out there on how to use all the bits and pieces. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely want to post some more in the future, going over some of the game development things that I've experienced in Unity, making my first VR game.